middle schoolers, seventh graders, eighth graders. Hello, my name is Cecily, and you and I are gonna to be together for the next 10-ish minutes to review what you probably already know about the CASP, English Language Arts Performance Task. Why? Am I making a video for you about the CASP English Language Arts Performance Task? Because I love it. And I know you can attack it, show what you know, and do your very best. So the point of this short video is just to review what is it, why do you take it, and how can you rock it? All right, CASP, what does it stand for? Do you know? CASP. The CA stands for our beautiful state of California. The A is assessment, an exam, a test. It is assessing all the things that are going well with your reading and your writing and assessing where there are any areas of improvement. S. <gasps> Student, that's you. We've had a, a preview of the P's right there. The P is per, per, per performance and I'm performing and reading and writing. And this is why I prefer to call this exam the CASP instead of the SBAC. Because guys, that final P, it's for progress, okay? Progress made year to year as every day you put an effort in your reading and your writing and Everything's getting better and better. Progress. Okay, because here's the deal. Do you know how many times you take the CASP ELA performance task? Here we go. You first take it in third grade and then in fourth grade, again in fifth grade. Then you take it in sixth grade. You take it in seventh grade. You take it in eighth grade. And finally, the last time you end strong in 11th grade. So you get seven different opportunities over the years to show what you know. Now, what does that mean? Here's what the performance task wants you to do. It's gonna give you maybe three, maybe four different sources, articles, texts, and those three or four sources are about a topic. Here's what you do. You read about them, take notes, on what they're about and then you turn around take another piece of scratch paper and you plan out an essay that you will write about that topic that's it done here are some things to know there are three different genres in which you may be asked to write that e is for explanatory, also known as informational. And this is where the performance tasks asks you, hey, student, can you please teach your reader about this topic that you have just read about? The A stands for one of my personal favorites, the argumentative genre, where the performance task says, hey, student, We've given you these sources, read about them, and then form an opinion, argue, try to persuade your reader about an opinion that you have about these sources that you just read. Finally, the N, narrative, right? This is where they say, hey, student, you just read these sources. Now we want you to write a story informed with the facts and details and ideas included in these three or four sources on a given topic. Love it. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy them all, but the narrative where you get to throw in the facts and details that you pulled out of the different sources, it's one of my favorites. Okay, so reading, notes, planning, writing. Got it, narrative informational opinion. That's it. Uh, the next thing to know 
gives you these three or four sources about a topic. The thing to know is that it's divided into two parts. The first part, you're gonna write several short essays about the topic. What I really enjoy about this as a teacher is it's giving you this opportunity to process all of the facts and ideas and details in the sources. That's part one, several short ones. Part two, then it says use those same notes, use all that information that you've just learned. And in part two, we want you to write one long essay. Again, what genres might that essay be in? Explanatory, argumentative, or narrative. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And here are my four tips based on what I have observed over the many years, okay? Guys, when you are taking the CASP, English Language Arts Performance Task, number one, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, nothing <clears throat> hurts me more than to see somebody put their head down, like on the keyboard. Don't give up. Now, if you need to take a little break, a little mini nap, a little power nap, a little breathing, that I understand. And then don't give up. Just come right back to it. The way you can come right back to it, the way you can stay engaged, number two, take notes. Take notes, take notes, take notes. This is why, for me, I always say that scratch paper is your best friend. Because here we go. You're sitting down. You're taking the performance task. You've got your pen and you've got your scratch paper. And you're like, okay, I'm reading these sources. Source number one. Oh, fantastic. This is about Tan Och, Tilan. Okay, Aztec capital. Oh my gosh, there are these amazing floating islands that they built called Chinampas. Okay, etc. Take notes, stay engaged, because then this is all the information that you can use when you turn around. And strategy number three, you plan. Scratch paper for input as you're getting the information into your brain. Scratch paper for output as you plan out. Ah, it's asking me to write an informational about Tenochtitlan. All right, let me think about what I want to teach my reader based on what I just read in these three or four sources. Scratch paper, plan it out. It makes it so much easier. Finally, number four, read your essay to yourself before you submit it. I'm gonna be bold and also say, you can even This is what I'm talking about. I'm saying you read, you take your notes, you plan out what you're gonna write, you write it, right? You got your draft. Don't hit send yet, take a moment, stretch. And then you read what you have written as if you were someone else. Try to imagine that you are just a random reader out there. Maybe it's your principal. Maybe it's a neighbor, okay? And you read it as if you were someone else. Do you know why? Because I find that as you're reading it again, right, and you're not really attached to it, you say, oh, wait a second. I could turn that one really, really long sentence into two sentences. I'm gonna put a period right there. That's usually um, what I discover when I read my stuff. I'm like, ooh, that's a, that's a long sentence right there. Right? You might catch the punctuation, the capitalization, just those little typos that perhaps you did not notice when you were writing it earlier. That's it. The CASP, English Language Arts Performance Task. I hope you really enjoy it, because I would say that's actually the most important thing, that as you are showing 
what you are knowing. Have fun.